Okay, this is a um, famous strategy for getting started on questions that are otherwise really difficult. Okay? It basically capitalizes on the idea that teachers want you to get somewhere. We don't give you actual mathematical problems from the world. We give you problems that we know that you can do because we want to be able to have a mark scheme and we want you to feel good. This means that we design questions deliberately. We put patterns in them. We put it, things in that are not an accident. And a good way to start a hard problem is to think, what about this looks like it was put there deliberately? What about this looks like it's not an accident? Now, there's a thing that you've been practicing lately, which I think looks like this. I can't actually remember it exactly. Okay, and your job is to factorize that. And you think, what about that looks like it's not an accident? What's patterny about it? Well, one pattern is that there's A's all through this, and there's also D's through that. And that's cool, that'll get you started. But a better pattern is that I put an AD there and a DA there, which are actually the same thing. Which means that minus that will be blank, which means now you've got four things to deal with instead of six. And the first question of the Senior Maths Challenge this year, there was a very simple question, which you can do the slow way if you want, but when you're early on in the Maths Challenge, you want to be um, saving time so you can do the harder questions later. What's special about that? They're close to 100. They're not just close to 100. One is the same amount below 100 as above 100. Okay? And that'll get you started. Okay? I'm not saying that's the solution, but that'll get you started. Finally, I'll tell you about this famous question about nine ball bearings, which look exactly identical, but one is heavier than the other, which are all equal weight. And your job is to use two, is to have two uses of a simple scale, not one with measurements, but one with either goes down here or goes up there. Your job is to use that just twice to try and isolate which of those is the heaviest ball. Now, you can do it by luck if you want, but your job is to come up with a method that guarantees. If you put four there and four there, or if you put one there and one there, by chance alone that one might go down and you'll be sweet, you'll know. But what method is more reliable than that? And the key to get started on this quite difficult problem is to think, what's special about the number nine? When the teacher who designed this designed it, they put the nine number nine in deliberately. It doesn't work if there's seven balls or eight balls. So what is special about the number nine, Ali? Just think back to year three. What's special about the number nine? Anything at all? It's a square number. Three times three. Right, we're almost there. Let's break it up into three groups of three. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to put three there and three there. That is unbelievably good. Because if that goes down, you'll know it's in that three. If that goes down, you know it's in that three. If, they, if neither goes down, another, if they stay equally balanced, you'll know it's in that three. In other words, the one you didn't put on. You've used one square. You've had one use of the scale, and let's have another. Whichever three it's in, let's say it's in this three, put one there and one there and leave one off. If that goes down, you'll know that's the heaviest one. If that goes down, you know that's the heaviest one. If they stay balanced, you'll know the heaviest one is the one you didn't put on. And that is only, and so there, that's the answer, right? Do it in two, three groups of three. <coughs> and that only comes from thinking what's special about the numbers. 